Coletti from Coletti Cycles. I'm based in Santa Cruz, California, and I've been building bikes since about 2003. And this is a gravel bike I brought. This is actually a new gravel bike for me. Titanium, half paint, Campy Ekar with some custom wheels with uh, Forge and Bond fusion fiber rims made in the US and White Industries hubs. Um, Ingrid Cranks from Italy and the parts set from Italy. And we've got an adventure road bike, which is located between a road and gravel bike. So a little more nimble than a gravel bike, a little more stable than a road bike, has bigger tire clearance, super nice all around her road bike and great for dipping into the dirt roads and stuff as well. This one has a special anodized finish that we did in house. Uh, the pattern is, is based on a mushroom and we used a bunch of different colors in there. Uh, I'm really happy about how this one came out. We'll look to do this again in the future. The website is colettycycles.com. You can find all the information on there. I'm Ross Hatton from Celilo Cycles. We're out of Corvallis, Oregon. And our bikes are a combination of carbon fiber and wood, where we take the wood, we cut the frame tubes like a butterfly open frame, hollow it out, line it with carbon fiber with a directional layup, put it back together, bladder uh, a supported layup on the inside so there's no seam, and then uh, machine down the outside so we get this nice bicycle profile with the carbon fiber inlay. Uh, one of our models, it's the Gradient Ascender. It's a gravel bike uh, designed for uh, all kind of rough forest roads we get out in Corvallis. Uh, so it's got a uh, maple and carbon fiber frame. It's rigged out with a sawn generator hub in the front and an onyx free hub in the back. Uh, we've got uh, full integrated lighting. We've got a dropper seat post. We've got the Shimano interrupt hydraulic levers on the front here. So that gives us gives me the ability to um, brake from the tops with the full hydraulic um, operation of the disc brakes. Tire clearance. I've got uh, 43 rock, uh, 743 rock and roads on it. With uh, if I take f uh, fenders off, you can get two inch tires on it. If you decide to learn more about the brand, what's your website? Celilocycles.com. C-E-L-I-L-O cycles.com. I'm Vince Colvin with Chumba USA Bikes. Uh, we're based out of Austin, Texas, and we're handmade frame builders. Uh, we do a whole suite of bikes from uh, drop bar mountain biking, or drop bar mountain bike uh, with a 120 travel or a rigid fork, um, to gravel bikes, mountain bikes, um, a huge part of our customer base is bikepacking builds and trail bikes. So we do quite a few uh, bikes that are just built to kind of cover really long distances. Uh, we have a pretty uh, extensive crew of, of uh, bikepacking ambassadors that you may or may not know of. Um, but they're pretty active doing things like Triple Crown, Tour Divide, Colorado Trail Race, and they've set records on almost every course, uh, but they're also amazing human beings that helped kind of build the sport and, uh, and share their knowledge base. And uh, So we kind of try to take the same approach uh, with our client base, just working from their experiences and ours on the bike to uh, provide a service that gets you either a frame only, frame set, partial build, or a complete bike that's really focused towards your goals and who you are and what you want to accomplish. Uh, of course, we take things like fit into account. We can do a, a whole broad array of customizations on the bikes uh, from fit or, you know, raisons and mount customizations uh, and loads and loads of different finish options for 
paint and graphics. Website's chumbausa.com. Easy to find, C-H-U-M-B-A. USA.com. My name is Rich Fox. I'm the founder of Circus Cycles in Portland, Oregon. Um, and what you see here is uh, our approach to building frames, which is not quite like the other kids in the room. Uh, we work in bonded, lugged, anodized aluminum. And uh, one of the fun things we discovered along the way when we were developing the platform in the first place was that we could also laser etch um, into that anodized tubing. So we've done quite a few custom laser projects along the way as well. And you can see uh, over here on the rack a few examples of, those are some seat and top tubes from different custom art projects that we've done for uh, folks. Um, and those were custom bike projects, those just happened to be the tubes from said bikes. This is an example of our all-road build. Um, again, uh, something we're trying to roll out as a uh, possible uh, uh, stock build. Um, what you're seeing is CNC milled uh, lug work and anodized tubing. Um, everything is bonded together. Uh, the frame platform is com comes from, well, we're coming at it from the standpoint of, well, how can we build more efficiently in the States? So we look for substitutions for manufacturing processes. We wanted to get away from heat and paint and tooling and labor and also deal with the geometric weirdness of bike frames as a whole. Um, at the same time, if you do this badly, we had to really, really think about the details. If you take this process and do it badly from an aesthetic standpoint, it could end up looking like plumbing. Um, so we tried really hard, uh, kind of took my, my background in product design and product development and uh, pointed it towards solving that other detail, which is just the simple aesthetics. Um, if you look over here, one of the things you'll see is that if we were to cut this line here boop, and made it perpendicular to the tube and same here, you'd have plumbing. But we actually said, okay, well, how can we make that not happen? So we took this line and that line, made them parallel to one another, which is harder to do from a design standpoint, but the right thing to do because it's now parallel to the head tube and you have a unified element. The same thing happens at the back end of the bike. This line lines up to this line, which lines up to the seat tube, which also lines up to some things that are hidden back behind our uh, five axis bottom bracket. The rear assembly, is also um, echoing some of our manufacturing strategy and trying to maximize the value that we get out of certain CNC parts. So in this case, the top caps of our seat stays are, are a part that's mirrored, so we have two on the same frame assembly, but at the same time, we can use that same part across any size because as the frame gets larger and shorter, um, we can still continue to use the same parts so we can get those in higher volumes. What's your website? The website is www.ridecirca.com. Uh, check us out. So ridecirca.com. And thanks for listening. My name's Ethan. I'm with Commotion Cycles. Uh, we hand build bikes in Eugene, Oregon. We've been doing so since 1988. Uh, this is our 2023 Metolius Gravel Tandem. Uh, this is built with a Bosch Performance Line motor. Dual batteries have a range of about 50 to 120 miles, depending on power settings. We've got our Kalapuya tandem, non-e-assist, normal bike, aluminum frame, carbon fork, Rolf Prima carbon wheels on it. And for something a little bit lighter weight for the road guys, this is our Carrera tandem. So built around 25 to 32 millimeter tires, carbon fork, steel frame. It's really kind of all road sort of tandem. These are a Divide Adventure Touring Bike built around the Pinion 18 speed gearbox, SNS couplers. The all road crowd, this is our Camino. It's a Columbus tube set on this, carbon fork through axles. Built around about uh, 37, 35 millimeter tires. Lots of options for paint and decals and build kits, wheels. And moving up in tire size, this is our Clatch, another Columbus tube set through axles. Tire clearance goes up on this a little bit. 
40 to 45 to even 50 millimeter tires through the frame and fork. This one's a personal rig. Hey everybody, it's Mike DeSalvo from DeSalvo Cycles. Really fun to meet up here and at the Maid Show in Portland because last time we met, uh, I was actually in a sling and it was my, my, my with my broken shoulder and we were in Ashland, Oregon. So to, for the show today, I actually have a couple sold customer bikes. Uh, this one over here is the Titanium All Road bike. So gonna take a tire up to about a 36 or 38, kind of that in between between uh, road and gravel, I suppose. Uh, tie bike, super fun, really cool colors, actually stolen from old Volkswagens. And uh, kind of an interesting build as well. This customer wanted to keep, stick with mechanical shifting, which is kind of a rarity these days. Um, but yeah, really, really fun, fun build. Chris King, all the, all the Chris King goodies on there. Uh, Envy cockpit, the fork is actually from uh, Columbus one. So yeah, and it's super fun. This guy's in Portland, so he's gonna swing by and grab this bike. Uh, so, and the next one I've got over here is uh, probably what we like to call more of a gravel bike. Uh, this is a steel bike made with uh, Columbus tubing and um, oddly enough also mechanical shifting. Kind of this guy wanted to, we were, the goal with this one was kind of super classic bike. So he already had the silver GRX so we, we stayed with that stuff and then uh, you know tried to keep it low-key kind of timeless. And then, of course, the beautiful Rene Hurst tires with the tan walls. Um, he went for a dropper post, you know, something that maybe I guess you can take, uh, take on a little single track um, along with the gravel. So, yeah, that's what I got. A website. The website is DeSalvoCycles.com or DeSalvo Bicycles on Instagram. I'm Rob at English Cycles. Um, and this is the road bike I've got at the show this year. It's kind of my interpretation of the modern road bike, so all the fully internal routing and that kind of stuff, and disc brakes, obviously. Um, and otherwise, everything just kind of pared down to what it needs to be a bike and nothing more. Um, sure, so frame bag on here has the mag magic trick of <laughs> being held on by magnets. Um, so it makes it super clean on and off. Um, so and less, less brazing for me in terms of putting bosses on it. This is my bike I've been riding for the last four years. Um, so on this one, I gave a bit of an arc to the top tube to increase the, the capacity of the bag um, and continued that arc down the seat stays. And um, this has my own design of headset, which enables a inch and a quarter tapered fork to fit into a head tube that isn't massive um, so it just pairs better with the, the, the tubes in the main frame and saves weight um, and yeah I've been hammering this thing for, for four years now it just got a fresh coat of paint it's still going so um, this was a great bike during the pandemic because three bottle cages I had a fourth one underneath and frame bag for food so I could go ride for six, seven hours and not need to stop anywhere, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is pretty great.
What? Uh, EnglishCycles.com. So we're uh, Flux Customs, based out of Denver, Colorado. Um, we've been doing uh, finishes, high-end bike finishes, for a few years now, and uh, decided for the show that we should build some bikes to put our finishes on. It's a little bit of a wrong way round situation, but, uh, you know, so we built a couple titanium bikes. Um, this particular one is a painted finish, kind of a randoneering style bike. Um, call it modern randoneering, if you will. Uh, not a lot of lugs and, and uh, wax canvas bags on this one, but um, yeah, just the, the long distance bike I've always wanted. Um, did a carbon tie hybrid construction, uh, managed to cut a substantial amount of weight off of the bike, so that was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, modern drivetrain and modern brakes and just all around a pretty cool little bike. So this was kind of a, our take on just the classic, the rim brake road bike, um, similar construction, tie carbon hybrid, and uh, this is a ceramic coat finish, um, which I think on tie is, is the tops. It's great. Um, just a super, super thin coating where paint typically will add, you know, 100 to 150 grams of weight. Ceramic coating adds maybe 20, if that. Um, so it's great when you're really kind of trying to keep the, keep the weight down. Um, and then we also actually refurbed uh, a few components for this one. Um, so we took uh, the lightest rim brake road grupo of all time and uh, we refinished it. It was, it was old, it was beat up. And so between ceramic coating and paint, uh, we, we turned it into a little, little something classy. And so, uh, website is fluxcustoms.com, Instagram handle, flux.customs. I'm Jonathan from Framework Bicycles. Uh, we're based out of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And we use a construction method of bonding carbon tubes that we produce in-house to fully CNC machined lugs. So each bike has a parametric model associated with it. Um, so everything is custom geometry in terms of tire clearance, rider fit, everything. It's all controlled through a SOLIDWORKS model. So we enter a set of parameters and then the model will automatically update for that rider's bike and the CNC machines are programmed automatically from there. So it takes about 30 hours of milling time to produce the lugs. And this is the one I'm holding in my hand as a bottom bracket cluster. This is 7075. It starts as a block of aluminum about that big. And all of them are fully machined and they come out like that. So we don't have very much human labor. Like with a 3D printed lug, you'd need to do a lot of post-processing on it, heat treat, polishing, machining if you wanted the tolerances that we get. So because this stuff is done in a CNC machine, we can put proper bearing fits in both the headset and the bottom bracket. So our bearings press right into the frame. Um, yeah, it's, it spins. Sorry, that hit my hand on the other side. So free spinning is one thing, but all the preload is actually built into the axle design. So if you come over here, we don't have any preload adjustment on the axle other than the crank arms go shoulder to shoulder, and that preloads your bearings properly. So. Our design for the crank is a little unique in that there's a polygon bore and uh, kind of a reverse collet. So this just goes on kind of hand fit, loose. This threaded bolt has a taper on it. So when you bottom it out, it expands that wedge out, sucks the arm on and gives you all your preload and spacing. The other thing we produce, which is a somewhat polarizing topic, your friend Lucia Technic from down in Australia would hopefully prefer our design where this is our headset cap and everything is a single piece. So this is the press fit on here. I don't know if your camera will resolve that tiny little step in there. So our headset bearings are pressed directly into here again because we machine that all in a single shot. We line bore both the bearing seats. So um, I'll let you hear by hand. 
just feel the feel the front end. So that's fully preloaded. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like no resistance. And that the internal cables are going through there too, right? So there's uh, so that that bearing, that tiny step there. Um, can you see those two cutouts? So that preloads. There's like a flex here there. So once you hammer that home, it actually grips down even harder on the steerer tube without putting any point loads in it. And then that's the gap for your cables to run through. So that bike is um, full two by mechanical internally routed. So, and again, you can feel that there's like nothing there. Instagram. I post a lot of stuff. I'm really heavy on um, like showing exactly what we're doing in the machine shop. So yeah, my background, my wife and I own a tool and die shop. So is there a website? Frameworkbicycles.com. I'm working to upgrade it to something with a little bit more detail and uh, hopefully streamline for customer purchasing. But again, the bikes are all fully custom, so there's uh, usually some interaction we need to do. Hey, it's Ming Chan from Haley Cycles again. Thanks for watching. This is our one of our gravel bikes that we've been showing for the last couple of months. We've updated it with the Cannondale Lefty Oliver, so 30 millimeters of travel up front, made it to our handmade tie frame. This is our oversized straight gauge tube set, also kitted out with the Campia Car 1x13 gravel group. All of our bikes are built to order. So basically we try to keep it as simple as possible. You choose your tube set. We offer three different tube sets to choose from. We, build your, we help you build your geometry. We can build your complete bike. So you, the idea is you get exactly what you want. And that's fit wise, spec wise, and color wise. What's your website? Haleycycles.com. Uh, hey, my name's Steven Wood. I'm the, the builder from Swid Cycles and the Twisted T-Bar. Um, we're here at the Maid Show, and uh, I've got a new business partner, uh, Wilson. We're launching a new brand here at the show called uh, Hout Bicycles. Um, we're moving away from our full custom commissions and trying to get a couple models locked down of what we like to ride and uh, size ranges and small batch building. Stock sizing and uh, a small upcharge for custom stack and reach. Um, but we kind of think that the type of bikes that we're building, that that's probably not that necessary, but we'll still do it if you want. The two of us working out of a, a single car garage. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're looking to grow. Wilson has been uh, in the industry for a long time. He's owned a couple bike shops and he's a master mechanic. So we got this great symbiotic relationship of he's specking and selling the bikes and I'm building them and we've got a new Instagram account we just fired up in the last week. It's uh, what is Hout .bike Co. Hout .bike. Yeah, that's right, Hout.bike. Um, so check it out. We're going to be posting all the photos of these bikes on there and hopefully a lot more content to come. This is probably one of the last uh, swoods that will be made for a while uh, as, as we transition to the, the Hout brand. Um, so I made this for myself just kind of as a uh, I know I needed something to bring to the show. Some really nice blingy parts on here. Got the nice inverted Wren fork. Um, I also have a couple 3D printed parts on here of my own design. Uh, it's the first time I've done anything like that. And I think there's a lot of that going on at the show this year. Um, which is really cool. Uh, it's a very, very neat process. SwidCycles.com. Um, you can learn all about how to do a full custom frame commission and I also sell these little front bag decalers. Uh, they mount, replace the spacer under here 
Keep your handlebar bags from flopping around and rubbing on your head tube. Honestly, these are 75% of our business. Um, we, we can't keep them in stock. Here with Heavy Bikes out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. We've come up with a aluminum casted bike that has no welds. And we pour um, under a pressurized system in order to ensure that the strength and the porosity of the frame is exactly what it needs to be. Fully customizable, not only to the geometry, but then also to any orientation of artwork, designs, logos that people would like to put on their customized bike. Frame itself would be in the eight to $9,000 range, and then a fully built bike with all the components that you're seeing on it today would be at 16,000. What's the approximate weight of the frame? Eight and a half to nine pounds. All right, folks, over to me for some commentary here. This is a pretty crazy bike. This is the prototype machine here of the bike I showed you a moment ago. I mean, I'm not a materials engineer, but it's very interesting. This bike is potentially 100% indestructible. Yes, sir. Wild stuff. People watching this video are probably going to say this is very reminiscent of the old Kirk Precision bike from Magnesium, but no, it's not. It's cast aluminium, as I say, or aluminum, if we prefer, for the American audience. Very interesting stuff. What's your website? Cast up bike. All right. Thanks for your time. I'm Thomas from Horse Cycles. We're here at the Maid Show, uh, showing four bikes, two gravel adventure bikes. Um, Ma making these new anything cages, stainless steel, super into those, but yeah, just kind of moving more towards uh, chunky bike packing, um, kind of do it all, drop bar bikes. And this guy's steel over here. Um, we got some, a nice feed bag attachment, um, water bottle mounts on the other side of down tube, internal cable routing. Uh, and then over here, we've got titanium. This is a Cerakote fade finish. We've got the same stainless anything cages, which I'm starting to make in-house, bending uh, and welding. And yeah, tapered head tube, super stoked. So, website, website horsecycles.com. Hey, my name is B Vivit, and I'm from Hot Salad Bicycles. I make titanium and steel bikes. This one happens to be for Anne Marie Rook, and it was awesome to fabricate. It's a road bike, technically, but it's an all road bike, so it can hold up to 32C tires pretty much across brands and some 35s. Um, I, it's made out of titanium, and I did all the finish work myself. The powder coat was done by my uh, cohort, Sean, at lunchtime as well. I love the brand, I love the bikes, I love building machines that just make you smile. What's your website? HotSaladBicycles.com.